Welcome to module 2B of a course called Coding for Crosswords. For more information on the complete course, please see the links below. In this module, we are talking about installing your environment for compiling C++ for a browser. Now, this is the lightest weight environment you can possibly have. All you need is a browser, and even in a Chromebook or any computer. It also is the environment that might present some challenges later when you do things like read from a file or write to a file. Each of these environments is just web-based and they'll have their own way of treating uh, file input and output. Plus, they might not be very efficient. You know, They're not gonna give you a lot of CPU time to execute the program. So you might wanna start with this approach and then if it starts to become a problem, move to either a Windows or a Macintosh um, or a Linux environment, um, you know, to be able to get just more power and features in your in your coding environment. But this should get you started. And I'm going to talk about three different ways to do this. So the first one we'll try is called Code Pad. Okay. Now it's 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 not this coder pad. That's something that's I think it's a paid product. What we're after is this Code Pad. It's just a simple environment. And right here you can look. You can pick on the left. You pick C plus plus. That's important. And in fact, we need C++ 2014. So I'm not even sure if some of the later routines will work with this environment, but at least you can get started. And you just type your code in here. So, and then you can hit the submit and it will, and it will run the code. So here you go, you can type in, you know, we're gonna get to this in module three, but you can type in stuff like main, you know, C out, hello, like this will be your code, okay. so. That's the type of code you can write directly in here and submit it and you'll get compile errors and things, which we talk about in the next module. Uh, that's option number one. Let's do another one. Let's do, let's go back and search for one called IDE1. That's another one that I found listed. And again, I haven't used these very extensively, but this looks like a nice one. Same kind of idea. You just type your code right here in a browser um, and you're able to run it just right here. You just click the run button and it will show you the results right here. And it doesn't do anything because this is empty. Oh, we're also in, um, I picked the wrong language. I think we're in Java. So we want to pick, language is Java. Yeah, so there's a way you can change the language. Let's go back to the main page. Here we go, right here, we don't want Java. We want, here we go, we want C++14, okay? So pick that one. Now here's your code in C++. You just type it in and you run it and it says standard output is empty. So for instance, you can edit it here and you can say your code goes here. Let's go ahead and put in something like C out, hello. Okay, this is our new code, right? With the line feed. We'll talk about all this. Don't worry about the syntax yet. We're gonna get to that in module three. But just right now, I'm just showing you something that will print hello, right? So we're gonna run this thing. Oh, I think we might have had to save it first. No, I guess it's okay. It's compiling it and running it. Now it's a little slow. And there you go, it's printing out. So these environments, they work. They're a little bit lightweight. They may not be what you want eventually, but if you just want something really quick to get going and run some of the first modules, um, you can use, you can use uh, either CodePad or IDE1, or there's one more I'll show you that I found, um, which is called REPL.IT, R-E-P-L. Dot IT. Let's try that one. It's a collaborative browser-based IDE, so maybe you can even collaborate with other people too. I don't even know. Uh, but here you go, start coding. You click that. You pick what language you want here. And we want C++, and they don't give you a choice for the version number, whether it's C++ 14, 17. But let's just pick that one and we'll see how it goes. So you create the REPL with that. And then it's the same idea again. You've got an ability to go right here and you can, um, and you can. I think how you run here. I'm not exactly sure, but there's some way to run this right over here in this, in this window over here. Right, it gives you more of a command-like window over here to run this. So, if you're interested in that, then you can, of course, you could just modify the code right here. So we can start to do, you know, integer x a integer x equals four. You know, the kind of code that we're going to write in the next module. You can see you can just enter right in here. So that's a third option. So those are three options. You can probably find more, but I thought those would just be baseline options in case you really can't get something to work on a Windows machine or on a Mac. Um, you can at least um, just get something going with this lightweight 
browser as kind of a backup plan. And maybe they work great. I don't, I haven't, I've never tried to run that much code on them. So, um, you know, you can give it a try. And, and if you have some experience on this, please go to the Reddit. The links are all below and talk about it and help other users. And maybe you'll, there'll be some tricks that will work. Maybe some of my modules that um, I'm going to be coding with you will work especially well under some of these IDEs. And you can talk about that and tell other people so they can learn which one will cause them the least problems. So that's it for this module. If you're going this way, we'll just you can just jump right away to module three. So we'll see you there.